I just was asleep in my life and and I had a wonderful life and there's there's you know no taking away from that as like a beautiful period in my life as well but it was like I just remember thinking like you deserve a life of joy and adventure and I was like there was no stopping me like there was nothing anyone could have said to keep me away from that I mean I have goosebumps I have goosebumps it's like that feeling of Trains are leaving. Wait, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> like, what? No, trains not leaving. Like what? And I think that the most, one of the most fascinating aspects of that to me is the notion of something doesn't have to be wrong for it not to mm-hmm. be right. I mean, isn't that the toughest part? Because then the crux of it all is the intangible. There's no pro and con checklist that can be made there is no logical yada yada it's like even though there's like 14 million things on this other side and this is my only reason and that is what i'm going Mm -hmm. with help me see is a podcast based in intention purpose and heart vulnerable real conversations challenging the norms and empowering you to harness your intentional vision for your purposeful life Around here, we're not about the small talk. We're unpacking all of the unnecessary crap that we've carried with us for far too long. Some of these episodes are solo style. I like to call them my little audio journal with my innermost thoughts that leave me thinking, am I the only one that feels like this? And then some super inspiring guests having conversations that I truly feel like are needed in today's world. Listen into a new episode every Wednesday and leave inspired by your everyday with the deep peace of knowing that you're not alone and have the innate power to make this life count. Have you ever just felt like you're missing it and you're not even sure what it is? And then all of a sudden you look back at like baby pictures of your kid and you don't even understand where the time went in the most cliche way. That's why I created Nostalgia Now. Imagine if you were able to just activate your nostalgia vision in any given moment and just know that you're really seeing it, that you're really experiencing your good old days now. That's what we do in Nostalgia Now. Nostalgia Now is a monthly membership that is filled with doable, sustainable practices that we'll actually carry with us in our lives. We meet once a month where we connect and make things on purpose, where we actually do something with the photos that just sit on our phone of our precious memories. Join us at the intersection of photographic practice, connecting to your truth, and creative expression so that you can live more of your life on purpose. And because I'm just opening this beautiful community, I have a special offer. If you join with a buddy or a bestie, you get half off. You each get half off your monthly membership fee for the duration for as long as you stay in your membership. So if you buddy up, you both get half off. Have the peace of mind of knowing you'll never have to say, I wish I knew how important that was at the time. Click the link in the show notes or link in bio on Instagram. Find out everything you need to know. Before we get into the show, though, I did want to let you know that I have a really exciting free offer. So I took um, one lesson. So it's lesson 10 out of module four in my uh, five week online course, Manifest Your Memories. Um, And I've given you access to it. All you have to do is sign up to check it out. It's simple, doable, easy ways to remember your actual life. It's called See Nostalgia Now. It is about how you can effortlessly and sustainably capture some really important, intimate, quiet moments of your life um, and just reminds you that you do not need to rely on a professional photographer. You don't have to choose between being present and taking the photo. You are the only one that can capture the most precious and intimate and important moments of your life. And 
I want to gift you this guide. So if you head to the show notes, I will put the link. And when you sign up with your name and email address and request your free access, I will personally enroll you in this free mini course. So go ahead, go to the show notes, click the link, and please let me know. Let me know what you end up taking, what moments you end up saving uh, with one of these super simple super simple ways to document your goodness. Okay, now on with the show. So as you guys know, I am a self-proclaimed um, introvert. And only in the last year have I really started connecting with people that energize me and actually make me want to be social. <laughs> and Megan Moran is definitely one of those people. So I have recently met her. Uh, we just did an Instagram live the other day, and she is actually hosting a retreat in Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Um, and it's all around connect. It's called connect. It's all around connecting mompreneurs. And it's about um, business strategy, meets self-care, meets personal development, basically almost all of my favorite things. And it is going to go down uh, July 13th to the 15th. If you are interested, I'm going to put a special link in the show notes. So go ahead and go check it out. Megan is all about helping mompreneurs up level and become an authority and a recognized source in their niche and connecting like-minded individuals. Megan has all sorts of amazing things planned from meditation to mindset work to implementation mixed with laughs, of course. And I'm going to physically be there in person. So excited. Um, but there's also good news. She had recently added on um, a virtual option. If you cannot make it down to be with us in person in all the fun and goodness, uh, there is an option to join virtually. Uh, Check out all of this information in the link in the show notes. And who knows, maybe I'll see you at the retreat. Again, this is uh, the Connect Retreat with Megan Moran. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Help Me See. Oh, I am so excited for today's talk. Today on the podcast, we have Angela DeRozier, and she is creator of the Align Experience. It's an online bar and yoga studio. She's a retreat leader, an educator, a mentor, and just the coolest. <laughs> I absolutely loved our chat. It was so powerful. I got goosebumps multiple times. Um, we hear about her experience with presence and how her coming into presence um, and being present to herself and her needs actually ended up in a huge life change against all odds and against the life that she was living previously, where she didn't even really realize that she was unhappy or unfulfilled and having the courage to basically pull the rug out from under herself and <laughs> go with her gut and go with what felt best for her soul. So we get to hear all about that gorgeous journey and, and how being present to her needs has helped her to live deeper into her life. Um, and also we get to learn about her offerings as a bar and yoga um, teacher and all the things that she's up to. So if you want to hear more about Angela and check out some of her resources, go ahead and click on the show notes. I will add all of her links there. And she does have on her website, a free 14 day trial for her Align experience. So some freebie goodies there. I hope you enjoy. And without further ado, here is Angela. Hello, Angela. Thank you so much for joining. Help me see today. I'm How good, are Bianca. you? Bianca. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Oh, I'm so excited to have you on. And specifically during this month of our deep dive into presence and defining presence, because um, one of the reasons why I wanted to deep dive into this is because I feel like it's so unique to each of us, yet there's a kind of a similar wash over what people can believe presence means. And one of those words that comes to mind when I think of presence is I think of stillness. So 
the little I know about you of my deep dive into your website and all of that is how passionate you are about movement. <laughs> and so I'm just so curious to hear knowing that about you, um, a little bit more about how you, how presence feels like in your body and in your mind and in your soul. So, um, before we get into that, can you just tell us a little bit about, um, what brought you to this work and, just a little bit of your background. Yeah, definitely. Well, I've been in the movement realm of some sort for my whole life. I grew up in the dance studio. I eventually owned my own dance studio. And so movement has always been just like a huge part of my life. And then eventually that, you know, transitioned into teaching yoga and bar and other forms of fitness. So, um, yeah, I feel like there's never been a time in my life where I haven't been in my body in that particular way. And it's funny because yes, you can think of presence as stillness, which I mean, I do plenty of that in terms of meditation, that kind of thing. But I, I honestly think I'm most present when I'm moving my body because I'm really just like getting in touch with what's happening in my inner world, you know? Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's amazing to like move around all that energy and kind of see what surfaces, see what maybe you've been avoiding, see what there is to kind of, you know, get a better grasp on. So I think you can learn a lot about yourself through movement. I love that so much because it's, it's, it makes so much sense as you describe it, like how much more present can you be when you're in this precarious, you know, physical position and you're really being mindful about every single muscle that you're feeling in your body. Um, it's so fascinating. So, okay. Before we dive more into the work, can we talk about, whatever comes to your mind when I ask you to describe one of the moments where you felt most present in your life. Yeah. Well, I would say, um, there was like a whole kind of segment of my life where I was like so deeply present and also one of like the most chaotic clustery types of my whole life. But I was in yoga teacher training. I was just finishing up. And so, of course, I mean, presence, we're talking about presence every day in yoga teacher training, you know, and, um, you know, coming off the heels of doing these like super long meditations and whatever. And so I was like, as open to the universe as I've ever been. I'm like, what are you going to send my way? You know, and um, <laughs> I was married at the time. And then I'm trying to make this not sound super scandalous, but I guess like maybe it's mildly scandalous. So then I met my current husband. <laughs> and, um, I just remember being like, this is like, it was like, I was rebirthed. I was like, this is, this is how my life is supposed to be. Like never in my life have I been more clear. Have I been more, you know, <laughs> kind of just screwy in the mind, but also like, oh my God, like I haven't been really awake in my life until right now. It's pretty amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I've got some questions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so first of all, you said, when you said, um, a segment, I'm so curious, um, why, uh, what made you think of this, this segment of your life? And what, when you say a segment, like what are, what's the time span we're talking about? Because I feel like a lot of us, when we think about when I was most present, if you think of a very specific second, but it seems to, to me that you've had, you had this like, mo like season of your life where you, Felt like you were really coming into it and you're in the flow of it for a longer period of time. So can you describe a little bit more about that? Yeah. I like the word season. I, I don't know why segment is the one that popped into my mind, but just what, what appeared. Um, yeah, I think, I think I had never, and not to take anything away with my, from like my past relationships or anything like that. It's not, I just had never been truly loved like I was when I met my, my husband. And so I think that like, just was a catalyst for just all this other awakening that was happening in my life. And also just like kind of discovering myself through yoga and kind of deepening that practice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just, I really feel like someone like poured a bucket of cold water over my head or something. and was like, okay, you're awake now. You know, it's kind of cool. <laughs> what, and I mean, can we even die? I don't even know this might be a weird question, but like, can we dive deeper into what that awakening feels like? Because I know what you're talking about. Like I, there are just some people that may, 
make you feel more alive. And I'm so I'm fully aware that people can't make you feel you feel like it's like you, you know, maybe people present an opening in ways and an energetic way that it's just like a chemistry thing, or it's like a vibe thing. I don't even know. But I know exactly what you're talking about when you say that, because I've experienced that myself as well. Um, Can you just dive into what that meant for you or like what that felt like for you? Yeah, I think, you know, it was, it was very shocking to people when I left my ex-husband. We had been together since I was, I'm just going to say a small child. I was 17. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, at the time I was like, you know, I'm so mature and sophisticated. But anyway, looking back, it's like, whoa, girl. Um, and I, I just was asleep in my life. And, and I had a wonderful life and there's, there's, you know, no taking away from that as like a beautiful period in my life as well. But it was like, yeah, it was, I I mean, I, I literally looked at my now husband, I'm confusing the husbands here, but you know, my current husband, the one and only, (laughs) I literally made eye contact with him and was like, I'm going to marry him. And it was like, So half of my brain was like, yeah, girl, this is what you're meant to do. And then, I don't know, maybe like 30% was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, this is not, this is not what we do. You know, I've I've always been just like steady Eddie kind of person. And so I just remember thinking like, you deserve a life of joy and adventure. And I was like, there was no stopping me. Like there was nothing anyone could have said to keep me away from that. I mean, I have goosebumps I have goosebumps it's like that feeling of trains are leaving wait what yeah. the fuck <laughs> like, what? No, trains not leaving like what um and I think that there's so many um so many versions of this feeling like whether it's a career or a life or like a geographical like you visit somewhere and you're like oh I can't continue my life in this like I can't unsee what I've seen I can't unfeel what I I feel. Um, and I think that the most, one of the most fascinating uh, aspects of that to me that pops up is the notion of something doesn't have to be wrong for it not to mm. be right. And that, I mean, isn't that the toughest part? Because then what the crux of it all is the intangible. There's no pro and con checklist that can be made. There is no logical yada yada. It's like the epitome of like your gut. Like there is not like I'm you're like I know this is my right even though there's like 14 million things on this other side and this is my only reason and that is what I'm going mm-hmm. with. Um can you speak about that feeling and about um the conviction uh and how to get past any sort of like uh because you said that you know for so much of your life it was kind of like steady eddie um you know the logical like this 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 like i've no like this makes sense this makes sense this feels good this is not bad um what is it that made you like drop in to your like presence and to your like deep knowing that this is what my life is and should be. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's ignoring, sometimes you have to ignore that logical voice, you know? And I mean, obviously it keeps you safe and all those things. You don't want to just be like all loosey goosey and stuff like that, but. It's steady Eddie, loosey goosey. (laughs) (laughs) Who is Lucy and who is Eddie? (laughs) I don't even (laughs) <laughs> they're probably together <laughs> that's really funny. but I feel like you know society teaches you or wants you to think that life is linear and so you do this and then you do this and then the expectation is that you'll do that and I feel like every now and again something comes along that like just rattles that for you and and you can choose to to follow that path or not. I mean, I don't think that anyone who catches your eye needs to be like a whole new life for you that you follow or whatever. But I also think that like, sometimes if it's presented to you and you're ready for it, it shouldn't matter to you what other people will think or, cause that, that was the biggest thing. And I still struggle with that, you know, almost six years later of being like, 
worried that, you know, there were people I had to leave behind, not just my ex-husband, but like friends and things like that. And still worrying about like what people think of that scenario. And it's like, yeah, but that's not my life. I I can't be responsible for that. So I have to just be focused on the fact that I have created this life that I love with somebody that I'm meant to be with, you know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and those, I think it's a lot easier said than done to say, and be, and it's almost like a pride point of like, Oh, I don't live my life according to others, but it's not that cut and dry or simple. Like there are feelings attached to the, the people that we consider, like consider their opinions for, whether that's like, you know, family or friends or what have you. But I think that the reality, the big R reality, <laughs> not the little R reality, but the big R reality is like the, the life that you decide on and choose is the life that you're present in every day. Like you open your eyes and you put your feet on the floor of where you choose to be. And, you know, all of those concerns about making others more comfortable or uh, having others understand your choices, like they have their own life that they're waking up and putting their feet on the floor to. And, you know, all you can do is be present to how you feel in the body that you're in, where you are. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, now being on the other side of that, you say you still have, you still think about it, uh, you know, from time to time because we're human, but any other learnings that you can share with us for that? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just, it is a really difficult thing to go against the grain. And I, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that don't have a problem with it. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there's people out there who are just like, yeah, screw you. I'm going to do what I want, which good mm-hmm. on you. Um, <laughs> but I just feel like, yeah, I mean, if, if do you live a life that you're proud of? Like that, that is the ultimate gift of presence, right? Like I roll over every morning and I'm like, all right, like, look at this beautiful human I get to share my life with. And it, it's, it's what fills my soul. And I can't imagine, like, I can't imagine not having that. And even if he was in my life for a second and didn't go anywhere else, I still knew my life had to change in that moment. So there was like no going back. Like even if he was somebody that I didn't spend my life with, I was never going to live my life the way it was leading up to that point because I couldn't, you know, like you said, like you can't unsee it. It's there for a reason. And, you know, I mean, sometimes the universe gives you these like little nudges, right? And I'm sure I had gotten like 5,000 of them leading up to it. Even as I was posting on Instagram, like, you know, selfies of my ex-husband and I like, oh, we're so happy. It was almost like I in one second was just like, oh, my God, I'm not happy. Like, I didn't even realize. So people were so surprised after like, well, why didn't you tell me that things weren't going well? I'm like, I couldn't even say it to myself. Never mind to you. So I had to come to that place of like, oh, God, you know, this isn't this isn't working for me. Oh my God. That feeling. I know it's like the, the universe like nudges. Yeah. It's like a little tickle and then it's a slop. on the side. Of the- <laughs> this calls it a cosmic two by four. Like the universe just like, you're going to listen now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think that, um, I've kind of discovered that feeling of like, I didn't even know. I didn't even know. And I, th- I would think that I'm kind of in tune with myself and I didn't even know. I, I just had that recently. It was like, um, someone had, we were talking about something and someone had said or asked about like uh, struggles with worthiness. And I was like, Oh no. Like I kind of just dismissed it. I'm like, yeah, it didn't hit the point. And I kind of sat with me in the back of my head for like two weeks. And then I was able to like witness all of <laughs> <laughs> like now and like for like 20 years down the road I'm like oh yeah I do struggle with that. <laughs> it was the great unseeing or seeing right the no you're like no I got this I am so worthy yeah. it's not even funny <laughs> <laughs> someone pays you a compliment and you're like oh no I, I'm not worthy of that <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me list all the reasons why that is untrue. Oh, there it is. There it is. Um, oh my goodness. All right. So now let's paint the scene here. Okay. So there's this, there's a great awakening, right? And so now it's like, you're happy, you're in the life you want to be in. So in this, in this way, where are the micro doses of like presence that you have in your life of like those, I don't know, like those moments where you notice a friggin' spider web and all of a sudden your brain is like, Oh my gosh, can you, that little thing made that huge thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are those moments for you these days? Yeah, well, I feel like that part of things is a practice for sure. You know, I mean, you can, you can just do the things and check the boxes and, and not be like truly like here in your life, or you can make every moment or, you know, I shouldn't say every moment, goodness gracious, I wouldn't get anything done, but you know, moments throughout the day where you're like, let me take a breath. Let me, you know, really truly see the person I'm talking to. Let me like, you know, be present with my dogs, like however that shows up for you. And, you know, I, I start my day, this is something I've done for almost two years where I have like my own sacred space. So, you know, whether it's meditation this morning, it was like movement, a little journaling, like, you know, I usually spend like 15, 20 minutes just with myself. And like, sometimes that's not being present though, because if I'm sitting there in stillness and if somebody walked in the room and they were like, look how present she is. But in my mind, I was like doing all the things, you know, that can be (laughs) like a, 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 a difficult obstacle to get through. So I think it's just, it's just making yourself available to those moments as you go throughout your day. Oh my gosh. What you just said, it was like such, I mean, I, that's going to turn into a post-it making yourself available for those moments are 1 trillion percent because there are, I think that's the main issue here or the point of contention is this, this is what this should look like. And we've all been there where we're sitting there on the mat or we're on a bench in a park, this beautiful scene. And it's like, why? I know I'm not here. If I'm being honest with myself, Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> like this, yes, I'm, I scheduled in mindfulness for myself or I scheduled in this, you know, this purposeful, you know, event and I'm just not here. I just can't get here. And, you know, it, what do they say? They say when you're meditating and you can't stop the thoughts from coming, don't fight them. Just let them go. Just let them keep going. And it's okay. And it's normal, but it's when we try to like, Oh, why am I thinking like this? Or why am I doing this? it's, it's really interrupting the practice even more, um, doing it that way. Uh, something that I'm, I relate to in that sense is when, um, people have a strong rule about, you know, not taking a photo this way or that way. And that's kind of what I liken to that meta, uh, meditation theory of like, well, if you had the urge <laughs> and then you don't, and you resist it, and then you go about your day lamenting that, <laughs> you know, I'm not quite convinced that that was in the name or honoring presence because that doesn't seem like, you know, true to how you wanted to be in that. Well, moment. how many moments were lost after you made the decision to quote, quote, not be present? You know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, you know, like my friend talks about food in that, in that regard. Like if you, if you give up something, And then you spend the rest of your time thinking about that thing you so, you know, quote unquote, can't have, then it's like, well, God, look at all that time. Look at all that energy that you've just wasted. Yeah. Just have the cookie. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Have the cookie. Um, I, so in, in your writing on your website, it's really beautiful. I'll I'll put the links in the show notes, but something that you really um, emphasize is in your practices and your classes, um, that you really strive to make it an experience. Can you talk a little, little bit about that and what that totally. means to you? Yeah, I mean, I, to me, that's the biggest thing is that, you know, oftentimes any form of movement can be a check the box kind of situation. You know, I'm supposed to exercise for, you know, 60 minutes at a time and I need to do, you know, cardio three times a week and whatever. There's all these like prescriptive formulas out there that drive me absolutely bonkers. And I think for some people, maybe that works. But to me, 
I want you to feel whatever it is you need to on your mat. So if, you know, you've come having a bad day and you can laugh on your mat, I think that's awesome. So many people have told me like, I never have laughed in a yoga class till I took yours. And I'm like, really? (laughs) Okay. I mean, that's a nice compliment. Like I appreciate that. But also because yoga is supposed, I think supposed to be like serious. And, and I just like, I want to open it up to people to be like, how do you need to feel today? Like you are in control of that. I'm, I'm a facilitator, right? I can make all these suggestions about poses and whatever, but at the end of the day, like you're the one living in your body. And so you have to give yourself an experience of how you want to feel. I actually have one person who attends my classes regularly. And oftentimes she just will, you know, it's a virtual class. So she'll just be rolling around like on her back. And after she'll be like, that's exactly what I needed. Like for whatever reason, she finds it calming to listen to my voice and then to just like give herself that space, like that time that she signed up for to just move in whatever way she feels necessary. So to me, that's what I want to create is just a space where people can be like, you know what, that's actually not what I needed today. And so I did this instead. And that to me, I'm like, yeah, I'm cheering you on for that because I mean, I don't always have the greatest ideas, you know? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, a lot of the time I do, but God. Uh, I feel like so emotional right now. I don't know. I feel like you just opened something up for me and I'm sure many others. Like, it's so funny how many, I think it's like infinite, how many layers of supposed to that we have on top of us that we just have to keep peeling and peeling. It's like, a, it just keeps on coming. It's like the magician with like the scarves or something. It's like, yeah, like you're who said yoga is supposed to be anything other than what you need it to be for yourself. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and it can be so deeply feeling. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've cried on my mat, but I've also like fallen over on my mat and laughed at myself and what you know, and it told crappy jokes. Like it's just it is whatever you yeah. need in that moment, I think. So that's the beauty of it. Yeah. I mean I've like I've thought about uh so I used to, I used to uh, take a lot of dance classes and some, and also I've done like cardio dance classes and stuff. And something that's always just felt bad in my body is jumping. Like, I don't know, I I'm very prone to migraines or whatever. So anytime there was any sort of like impact like that, I would just feel so, and I never even said it out loud until right now, because it's, it was so unconscious and like not even worth talking about, I guess, but like, I would just feel so like, Oh, I didn't do it right. Or like, I was supposed to do that, but I won't do that because I know that it's going to impact me in this way. But like, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I had a physical therapist. more than fine. It's better than that. Exactly. Yeah. No, I had a physical therapist say to me, this was years ago. And like, it pops into my head religiously. I remember saying to her, I was dealing with a shoulder injury at the time. And I was like, I feel like if I go and take a class that I'm kind of doing my own class, like, I feel like I'm I'm going rogue or something like that. And she's like, that's wisdom. And I was like, yeah, like that is wisdom. It is like, I, I'm honoring myself and I, here I am feeling guilty about it. You know, it's like, no girl, you, you do you, you do you. Your whole, and I actually now it's just organically coming up. So I want to talk about it more of uh, the Align experience, your, your online bar and yoga, um, awesome platform. That's what's so beautiful about the combination of live and on demand. It's like, do you need that space that on the schedule that like you're going to show up for? And is that you, or do you need to just do it when it strikes? Because that's kind of where I'm at in the season of life with movement is like, I'll schedule something in and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm not there. But like, if I feel all of a sudden this urge to do something, I want to do it immediately. Mm -hmm. And because I'm, I just so happen to be in a season where that's available to me and I don't have a lot of like structure appointments and need to do's for my day. Like I'm kind of honoring that. So can you explain a little bit about your business and how it came to be the way it is and you know, the ethos? Yeah. I mean, well, I will say that the universe kept giving me those nudges again. Like I, I was, you know, teaching at multiple studios and running around ragged. I mean, when I think about my schedule, that was like three years ago, I'm like, I don't, I don't even relate to that person anymore. And I don't know why she was like drowning in activity. Um, but yeah, so I was teaching at multiple studios and then the pandemic hit 
and everything went online. And so I was like, okay, well, this is what we're doing. Let me just become best friends with Zoom and we'll try this thing. And then, you know, people were starting to come to my class on a regular basis that I was hosting online. And a friend of mine actually was like, if you did a membership, I bet people would sign up. And I was like, let's try it. You know, all in the back of my mind thinking like, this will end when the pandemic's over or whatever. And it just, it just snowballed from there. And I was like, why don't I invest? And this is what I did a few months ago. I left my part-time job and I was like, this is going to be my sole focus. Like, this cannot be a little passion project I have going on on the side because this is what I love to do. I love to teach classes and I want to make that like my baby, you know, I want to nurture it and grow it like it deserves. And so, yeah, it's just, um, kind of grown organically, I suppose, over the past couple of years in August, it will be two years since I've started my membership. So, um, It's wonderful. And, and, you know, to your point, I have members on the platform that I never see live stream. But if, you know, I go on and I check, you know, I can run reports and see who's taking what classes and that kind of thing. You know, there are some people who like every morning at 530, they're logging in and taking a class. And I'm like, wow, good for you. And then there's some people where they won't do on demand. They need that like structure of a live stream class. And um, so I think it's pretty awesome that you can do both. And it's like, Hey, you miss a live stream class. I mean, it'll be up in a few hours. You can do it on your own time. So I think, you know, people over the past couple of years have either said like, I never am doing anything virtual again. Like they're never even going to open a computer (laughs) or they're like, this is the only thing that I'll do because why? I mean, when you think about how much time it takes to get your soul to a studio and the intimidation factor of that. So I think it's here to say, Oh yeah, I agree. I agree. And then it makes the magic of like coming together in person for something like a retreat or anything else like that much more of an experience, but like also the ease in which we're able to integrate more of this kind of thing into our lives now because of online is just incredible. And I I love that um it's almost like a, another iteration of like the first major s- switch in your life. Um, and kind of like veering off that. And then it's a, a beautiful, um, it's like you continue to open and open and open. Oh, this is working. Oh, this is going to be my soul, both S O L E and S U L focus. <laughs> this feels good. More of this, more of this, more of this. Um, and then I also just think about how, how now, how many other people are benefiting from your, um, willingness to lean into just what felt good to you and just pursuing that and just keeping on pursuing that. Like, and I'm sure like, Oh, I know like being an entrepreneur, that it's not, it's not full of like ease and daisies all the time. That's for sure. But something recognizing when something feels good enough that it's worth holding on to, And, and because, you know, in the presence of that, so no matter what's difficult in like keeping this, your main, your main full-time business, Uh, you know, that once you're on the mat teaching, like that is your presence. That is your happy place. That is where you feel awake and alive. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I can literally count on one hand the amount of times I've taught a class and not felt better after. And I've never felt worse, but sometimes you're like, okay, I feel the same, you know, whatever. But it is such a gift to have a job where you not only feel like you're contributing to other people's lives, but like, this is truly what I need to be a whole person. Like if if I haven't moved my body in however long, like I'm not myself, I'm not a version of myself I want to hang out with, you know? Yeah. And I think that the, the magic is knowing that and taking that seriously, Mm -hmm. not putting yourself on the back burner and like taking that piece of information that you know about yourself and prioritizing it. Um, and that I think I glean can turn into a more ease filled relationship with presence because that, I think that I come back to this. This is something that I've rifled with for a long time, feeling like presence is like Mount Everest. It's like, I feel like sometimes I need to claw my way to feel present when that's so the opposite of (laughs) of what it can be in the smallest of ways, like your willingness to create a habit of things that feel good and honoring of yourself, just, snowballs into the bigger things and also 
makes presence so much more attainable and ease filled in life. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, a lot of times being present kind of goes against everything that we're taught. Like I, I find the more present I am in my life, I don't know about you, but the weirder quote unquote weirder I am, you know what I mean? I'll be like, I'll be like weeding or something. And I'm like, Oh no, I just ruined that bug's home. <laughs> like it was used, <laughs> you know? And if, if I said that to most people, they would be like, okay, like no idea. What <laughs> you know, but I'm, well, because I am aware of like my surroundings, you know, where often, and I mean, God knows I'm not always, you should see me behind the wheel. I'm like, get out of my way. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like, cause you start to like see the world differently. It's, it's pretty cool. Oh, if you think about, I was just listening to this amazing podcast. Um, it's called Hey Creator. Um, Jeff Goins, he's a writer. He he hosts it. And he was just talking about uh, how everything that is like the norm and the structure was someone's weird idea at first. Like he was just talking about it. And it's like so true. Everything, anytime someone looks at you sideways because you said something outside of the norm, I'm like, that is what all of our norms used to be. He was referring to like some French lawyer that came up with uh, an LLC um, to limit the, your vulnerability when you're starting a business. Because before that, it was less and less people started their own business because there was no barrier. It was like, if you started a business, like your whole world was up for grabs if that didn't work out. And one guy was like, well, wow, what if we did it this way? And then all of a sudden, now that's the norm, you know? So it's kind of, it's it's just so funny to think about anyone's looking at you sideways because you're choosing to do something different than the norm because the norm was a weirdo idea from the start that just became more and more believed by more and more people. <laughs> a wacko that said, oh, we should work nine to five every day. It's like, what a stupid idea that was. And now here we are. Yeah. Long, you know? You know, him and the dude that like created high heels, they probably hang out all oh. the time. <laughs> Seriously, I'm friends with either of them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can you, so Angela, this conversation has literally been life giving for me. Um, is there anything else that you feel called to talk about right now? Is there anything that you're up to right now in your business that you want to share about? No, thanks for asking. Um, yeah, I just announced that I'm hosting a retreat with a friend of mine. She's a medium and, um, we're hosting a, a weekend retreat in November, 2022. And uh, we're almost halfway filled up at this point, but it's, it should be a really wonderful weekend that I'm really excited about. And yeah, I've always got irons in the fire. You know, there's always like 500 ideas and so I'm trying to ooh, like take a breath and do one at a time. I'm also going to be releasing a podcast with a friend of mine that comes out soon. And uh, yeah, just teaching my classes and trying to be present. Yeah. <laughs> be present so you're available to receive them so we can avoid the two by four from the universe you're like Let, i'm gonna take the nudges i'll take the right, nudges right. <laughs> i'm listening okay <laughs> um so all of the the retreat and like the if you have a link for the podcast coming soon whatever whatever you have we'll include it in the show notes um angela thank you so much for being so open and vulnerable and sharing with us i am I know that this conversation is going to insert so much value in so many people. So thank you so much. It's an honor to chat with you. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this episode and want to get in on actual conversations with me, join the Help Me See podcast private Facebook group. Every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'll be hopping on live for Q&A on the latest episode and for free consulting if you need a bit of help thinking about ways to save your memories. Did you get something out of this episode? I really, really, really hope you did. And I would love to hear from you. I'm on a mission to empower you to feel peace knowing that you are not missing your life. One of the best ways that you can support me is leaving a review. And honestly, I'd rather hear about the memory you saved because of this podcast rather than any kind of accolade. Tell me how this podcast has impacted you. And one, I'll probably cry. <laughs> <laughs> and two, I'd love to give you a shout out on the show. Take a minute and head out to the link in the bio 
to write a review now on the podcast. <laughs>